typing and I was talking and and I hope can you see my screen now? Okay, since we have some people trying to not to listen to me or not to read um, what I have on the screen, so I have to mute those people. Sorry. Muted. Okay, guys. So many things to talk about today. Last week, probably the uh, where we have um, most things to cover. Yeah, that's good, William. Always try to do it. And I prefer muting everyone because uh, sometimes the, the sounds are really annoying. Yeah, and you can you're gonna have to control even your own noises. Obviously, you're gonna listen to me typing. You're gonna listen to me moving. Uh, I always move, and my chair sounds really bad. And of course, I'm gonna be teaching. Okay, guys, three things for today. First of all, we're gonna be talking about sets. Then, second, we're gonna be talking about counting, and third, we're gonna be counting about probability. Everything here is going to be related. So they look like three different things, but they're going to have um, things uh, where they share, things they share that are going to be almost the same, or you're going to have like names that are going to result the same thing with different applications. So everything here is related. So first of all, about sets, we're going to have here, oh, by the way, um, forgot something, give me a second. Um, guys, if you want the notes that I'm gonna be typing, don't forget to email me. You see here my email. I'm not gonna type it later. So if you want, email me now for the notes. Okay, guys, so sets. Sets are basically a collection of elements. Imagine a bag where you have things inside. You can have balls, you can have papers saying what things you have, or you go to the grocery store and you have all the groceries in the bag. So those are the sets. That's a, that's a collection of elements. And here, we're gonna have two different ways to represent the sets. First kind of notation for the sets, which is Russell notation. So this is describe all the elements no, not even describe. Actually, it's list all the elements in the set and type them or write them inside braces and separate the elements with commas. So try to be really accurate there. This is, for example, set C. You can see we have here some elements. All the elements are separated with commas, and uh, they are inside braces. And I have here another set, set Z. Ooh, I started getting the, the emails. That's good. So I have here another set. Wow, four people. Awesome. Okay, next part. This symbol here. Every time you need a symbol, don't forget to go, uh, you know what, uh, to find the symbols, go to uh, the insert menu, and go to advanced symbols. And this is the first symbol here. This symbol represents when an element is part of a set or the element belongs to the set. Okay, I have here four questions. Can you tell me this? Here, the first question, dodge symbol C. What can you tell me?
So is the answer yes or no, Doug? The answer is yes or true, yep. Here, the question is saying, is Dutch an element of C? The answer is yes. What about the second question? It is false. It is not true. It is a no. Third question. No. A fourth question. Ah, oh, it is yes. Okay, guys. At least that part look. Um, Uh, it looks interesting. Looks clear. Questions, guys? Okay. If if that's clear, second type of notation. We just had the Rosen notation where you represent, well, you list all the elements. Now here, be careful with this one. The set built a notation. Um, give the characteristics of the elements of the set, not listing the elements. And the characteristics should appear inside braces after the symbol x bar x or x colon x, which represent a uh, all the elements of the set, all the elements such that, and then you have characteristics. Okay, guys, with that definition, can you tell me uh, how should I type um, set C? What is the set C that I said that I was talking about here on top? Uh, no, Brian, no, William, I'm asking. I'm telling, I'm saying here, what are the characteristics? And besides that, not listing the elements. Car companies, vehicles, yeah, that's good. So remember, you need the characteristic. Now remember, first of all, you need the set inside braces. Second, you have to start always saying all the x's such that x, and then you, talk, you, you say the characteristic is a car company. Uh, try to be as specific as possible, William. I would say here, X a car company and it sells cars in the US. So try to be as specific as possible. Now, now can you tell me what is the roster notation for set Z? Okay, I'm going to tell you, it is not odd numbers. Hey, Kerry, no problem. It is not only odd numbers. Be careful. Um, it, is, it is not only odd numbers. Well, and increasing by two, it's a, that's a representation of, of, the, of the odd numbers. 
if you have if you're gonna count the odd numbers you're gonna be increasing by two so it doesn't matter there is something else here now try to represent it in Russell notation I mean in, in set builder notation I'm sorry And remember, there is something else from what you have said. Mmm, Zach, you're closer. Not there yet, but you're closer. And, well, you're missing something. Mm, Brian, that's not a set. Uh, Zach, you're missing something. Now you're closer. You're even closer. You're missing something. Try to make it as proper as possible. Okay, a couple of a couple of tries and I'm gonna give you the answer. Ah uh, James, you are being you're being redundant. If you're saying odd numbers, odd numbers are numbers that are uh, going by two. Now remember. We're talking about all the characteristics. We're doing uh, here, what is a C? This set C. Ah, suck! William, um, okay, okay, I, I, I'm going to accept William, uh, William's answer. However, it looks horrible. Yeah, exactly, they are not prime numbers. So first, it is going to be in, inside braces. Second, just say x such that x. And then, what are the characteristics? The characteristic is x is an odd number between 0 and 40. You don't have to say anything else. In numerical order, well, it doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter here. When we're talking about sets, the order doesn't matter. Okay, give the characteristics that represent the numbers. So many people were forgetting this part between 0 and 14. Okay, guys, questions about the set builder notation? Uh, if you have questions, Zach. The question is, do you have questions? How, how bad it is so far? Or how good it is? Okay, two people have said no so far. Well, Katie, um, that's the reason I'm asking you. Do you have questions? The answer is not, I'm taking notes. The answer is either yes or no. Okay, you, we will probably get the question later. Okay, I'm just saying here, uh, we're talking about sets, which are collections of elements, and we have two types of representations. One of them is the Rosa notation, where you list the elements and separate them with, with commas uh, inside braces. 
and you have the set build annotation where you only give the characteristic. And we check this symbol here, which represents uh, it, it belongs to. That's basically what I have said so far. Okay, now, some relationships between sets, first of all. First of all, equality. Probably this is the easy one. Two sets are equal if they have the same elements. That's all. Remember, the same elements. I'm not saying the same number of elements. I'm saying the, exactly the same elements. Here, sets C and B, are they equal? Why not, Brian? Why yes, Brian? Why yes, Zachary? Zach, sounds better. Brian, that's the answer. They are the same values, and they are uh, they are rearranged. They have the same vehicles, so the answer is yes. Uh, the sets have the same elements in different orders. Okay, now, next relationship, subsets. Look, I have to repeat here so many times the word set, but I hope it is not gonna be that confusing. A subset of a set is a set Nah, hold on. No, I'm gonna change this. If a set, no, if all elements of a set are in another set, the first one is a subset of the second one. So remember, here it is, uh, the basic part is, all the elements on a set are in the other set. Uh, William, yes, the answer is yes. C is a subset of B. So try to follow, uh, well, I'm gonna give you one more definition here. Um, it is like a set inside another set. The set that is inside is the subset. So here, first question. Well, I have, oh, hold on, I'm gonna copy again, sets C and B. Okay, first question. Oh, well, and you can, you can see here the symbol. This is the symbol for subset. Uh, first question, is D a subset of C? <laughs> Brian and Rolo say yes, and Michelle says yes. And Zach say yes. Yes, all elements of D are in C. Is C a subset of D? Uh, Rolo, you say yes? Yeah, no, uh, no, since there are some elements in C, like for example, let's say Kia, that are not in D. Now, we have more elements. Actually, there are five elements that are, uh, that are in C but are not in D, but I'm just listing one. If I list one, that's good enough. Is B a subset of C? <laughs> it is weird. I answered this question a couple of minutes ago. Oh, well, the other way around. 
And uh, Jonathan, nobody has said that. So be careful here. So yes, B is a subset of C. Since all the elements in B are in C. Now be careful. I'm not going to focus on, on this part. Uh, B is not a proper subset since they are the same. Okay, so proper subset is a set, a, a subset that is not the same set. But we're not going to be talking about proper subsets. So here, by definition, we're going to use the well, we're going to use the loose definition. Everything that is inside or the same elements. Finally, is E a subset of C? Sac, correct. Since Daewoo is not an element of C, E is not a subset of C. Guys, questions about equality and subsets. Awesome. Awesome, guys. What is the next part? Oh, next part. Two operations that are really, really important, probably the most important ones. Symbols are for, e this, this, this is the symbol for union. So be careful. Union is the set that combines, mm, that combines all the sets uh, shown. with no repetition of elements. So here, what, what you're going to do is take all the sets that you have and put them together in one, in one set. That's all. And here we have another one, which is intersection. And here intersection is the set intersection. is the set of the elements that are common between the sets. Okay, so those are the definitions. Let me know how the definitions are going. Here I have sets A and B, and I need you to find first the intersection and then the union. When you give me the answer, please be specific about what you're answering. Okay, guys, I'm going to tell you. Zach, I said something that you're not following. Michelle, I'm going to say that your answer is wrong. Well, I'm, I shouldn't say that it is wrong. I should say something like, um, well, the answer is no, but the fact that I say no doesn't mean that it is not yes. Uh, William, your answer was incorrect. Jonathan, your answer is correct. Now, be careful. Zach, I said 
please be specific about what you're talking about. If you tell me 2x, 2 comma x, it is not anything. Is, it, is that the answer for, for question A or the answer for question B? So that's the reason I said it was wrong. Now, next person who talked was uh, Michelle. Braces, yes. So the answer here is 2 comma x. And for B, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, U, V, X, Y, Z. Okay, guys, questions about the union and intersection. Okay, so every time that a definition says set, don't forget the braces, don't forget the commas. Uh, William, you don't, need, you don't need the correct order. You, there is no correct order since order doesn't matter. Okay, guys, next operation, Cartesian product. Be careful because this is going to be long and probably confusing. It is the set of all possible ordered pairs between two sets in the form and it's the set of all possible pairs between two sets where the pairs are in the form x comma y where x is an element of the first set and y is an element of the second set. It is a set of all possible order pairs between two sets where the pairs are in the form x comma y parenthesis where x is an element of the first set and y is an element of the second set. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to give you this um, this definition and let's see what happens. I have here two sets A and B, and I'm gonna ask you to find first what is A cross B. What is the Cartesian product between A and B? Try to use only the definition that I gave you. If you make mistakes, no problem because I know it is confusing. Brian and Sack, it is the set of all possible order pairs. Okay, we're getting closer here. We're getting closer. The problem is we still have mistakes. William is the closest. Jonathan is the closest now.
William, you have the correct answer. So first of all, remember, it is the set. Because it is a set, you need braces and you need um, and you need commas to separate the elements. So you need braces. Then I said all possible order pairs. It is not going to be only one. There are going to be so many. So the order pairs are going to be, well, you're going to have the one paired with the one. So many people were forgetting the one with the one. This is an element, separate with comma. Then you have to pair the one with the y. Then the one with the z. Those are the first three elements. Then you have to pair the x. X comma one, X comma Y, and X comma Z. Now those are the pairs for the X. Now don't forget the Y has um, it has to be paired. So there's gonna be Y comma one, uh, Y comma Y, and then Y comma Z. Is that clear, guys? Awesome. B cross A, guys. B cross A. Yes, that. Yes, that is. You know what? I'm going to copy paste your answer. Oh, well, I'm copy pasting the one from William, but. Yeah, basically the same. Dear computer, move. Perfect. Okay, guys, questions about the Cartesian product. Okay. So the next part, set complement. Be careful because I have to define a couple of things here. It is the set of all the elements that are in the universal set and are not in the set. Uh, well, by the way, I have to say first, the universal set is the set of all the elements in the problem. So first, the universal set is all the elements in the problem. That means sometimes you could count all the people in the world or you can uh, make it smaller, like saying all the people in the, in the United States, or you can make it smaller and say that the universe is all the people here in this session. So that could be the universe. So if I say all the people that are in this, uh, in this session, if that's the universe, I can start working with sets. How many guys do we have? How many girls do we have? How many people with names that start uh, between A and M, and then how many people uh, that I have uh, that the name starts between N and Z, something like that. So in that case, because we are 12 people here, um, the, the sets are gonna have less than, than 12 elements. Now complement is the set of the elements that are not in the set. Think about set of girls or set of women, and the set of not women. If we are talking about binary here, and not talking about transgender, blah, 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 and all the debate, uh, boys and girls. Boys or men are the complement of women, women are the complement of men, in the basic sense. Don't complicate things. Okay, so here I have, um, set X, set Y, set Z, 
and I have the universal set. Be careful because the universal set is ABMP147. The question is, well, the questions are, what is X complement and what is Y complement? And remember, be as specific as possible. Oh, the symbol is the apostrophe, by the way. William Sack, you're correct. Uh, this is uh, AM1. What is Y a complement? Yes, because they are not in set X. Now, what is Y complement? BM17. Okay, that's good. Next part, the size of the set. It is the number of elements in the set. That's the size of the set. So the only thing you have to, to tell me is the number of elements. There are three elements, there are four elements, there are five, ten, one million. That's all. So, oh, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to copy this part. Okay. First of all, tell me, what is the number of elements in X? Well, William, thank you. Four. Number of elements in Y? Three, yes. Number of elements in Z. Four, thank you. Number of elements in the intersection of X and Y. I know, William, it, it is not negative four. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Okay, the number of elements in the intersection of X and Y is 2. The answer is yes. Well, actually, William, it's probably going to the center of the, to the Earth, to the center of the Earth. So be careful, because it is a negative number. Okay, guys, now pay attention to the next one. Oh, no, I have to say something else. Uh, what is the number of elements in the intersection of X and Z? Two, number of elements on the intersection of Y and Z. Two. Okay, number of elements in the intersection of X, Y, and Z. One. There is one element. The four is an element on all of them, on X, Y, and Z. Can you tell me what is the number of elements in the union of X and Y? Andrew says seven, Michelle says four, Jonathan says five. Whoa, three different answers. But I say it's five. That's good. 
Okay, guys, it is the time to learn a formula. So be careful with the formula here. Every time you're counting the union of sets, the best way to count is using the formula number of elements of the first set plus the number of elements in the second set minus the number of elements in the intersection of those two sets. So this is going to be um, 4 plus 3 minus 2. So this is going to be 5. So what so many people said is correct, 5. And remember, even though we have here seven elements, remember that we're not talking about repetition. You do, you do not repeat elements. Two elements are the same, so they are counted once. It is like, I cannot say that you are two people because you are taking, well, each of you is two people because you're taking two classes or because uh, you are in class and at the same time you work. I cannot say that you're two people. You are one person who is in two different sets, each of you. This is called the inclusion, exclusion principle. And the idea here is count the elements of the sets, so that is add the numbers, and then Subtract the repetitions. The intersection is a repetition. Now, can you tell me what is the number of elements in the union of X, Y, and Z? Now, we're talking about the union of three sets. Andre and Zach, be careful. Check the universal set. How many elements does the universal set have? Seven. So you cannot have more elements than the number of elements in the universe. It's like saying, okay, so 10 billion people in the world are uh, in the world but you know that there is 7 billion. Uh, you know what? 20 people in this, in this go-to training session are making mistakes or they, are, uh, they have learned everything. I cannot say that because we're only 12 people and 11 of those are students. So always be careful with the universal set. Okay, guys. Three sets. We have, well, M is here. M is here in the universal set. The universal set has been here for a long time. Actually, it was here before on top. So M was there. Now, when you have three sets, again, another inclusion exclusion principle. N of X plus N of Y plus N of Z minus the number of elements of the first intersection minus the number of elements of the second intersection minus the number of elements of the third intersection. Plus the number of elements of the triple intersection. So here the idea is first we count all the elements, but then we take out the repetitions, but on the repetitions, we are repeating something else. 
So it's going to be a double repetition. It's going to be double negative. That's the reason we have to add. So this is going to be 4 plus 3 plus 4 uh, minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 plus 1. Now I don't like this, so give me a second. So the total here is 6. So, Zach, you were correct. So, well, obviously, you don't have to memorize the formula. But uh, if you have it with you all the times, at least you know what you have to use to get a correct answer. Uh, final question for this part. What is the number of elements in the Cartesian product of x and y? number of elements in the Cartesian product of x and y. Yeah, what is the number of order pairs? Yeah, on the Cartesian product, each element is a, the pair. Every pair is um, the element, the single element. Michelle and William, let me tell you, you are correct. The answer is 12. But actually, you can say this. The, uh, the number of elements in a Cartesian product is the number of elements in the first set multiplied by the number of elements in the second set. So, of course, this is going to be 4 times 3 which is equal to 12. Okay, guys, questions about this, questions about the size of the set, questions about the inclusion-exclusion principle, questions about, um, I didn't ask for complements. That's good. That's good. Okay, guys, let's see if you learn a little bit about the size of the set. Here, suppose that A and B are subsets of the universal set and a, the number of elements in the universal set is 38 elements. There are 17 elements in A, 22 elements in B, and there are eight elements in the intersection of A and B. First question, what is the number of elements in the complement of A? What is the number of elements? in the complement of A. Guys, you're rocking it. Michelle and William, you are correct. Actually, when you're talking about the complement, what you have to say is the number of elements in the universe minus the number of elements in the set. This is equal to uh, 38 minus 17, 21 number of elements in the union of A and B.
No, André. No, Michelle. Oh, no, 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 no. Actually, no, William. Yes, Michelle. The answer is 31. But you were close. You were close. This is the number of elements of A plus the number of elements of B minus the number of elements of A union B. So here, the answer is going to be uh, 17 plus 22 minus 8. And 17 plus 22 is 39. 39 minus 8 is 31. What is the number of elements of the complement of the union of A and B? Yes, Michelle, seven. This is going to be 38 minus 31. Okay, guys, questions about anything related to sets? Mm, I forgot to say something. Here in the Cartesian product, this is the multiplication. This is called the multiplication principle. Where you have, well, when you have two sets and you want to count the number of elements, uh, when you join, when you uh, pair the sets, that is going to be one of the multiplication products. There is another one. Okay, guys, if you have no questions at all, I'm going to move on and I'm going to go with the counting techniques. The idea is we're going to count big things. Probably they're going to be repetitions. Probably you're going to have different scenarios for, for, for each counting. So be careful. It is the answers are usually going to be more than 10, more than 20. And of course, you're going to need a uh, pencil and paper to do it. So first of all, we have the multiplication principle. And I was saying that here because one way, so there are two possible uses for the multiplication principle. First, when you have two disjoint sets, that means uh, two, no, actually not even disjoint sets. When you have two different sets and you need the Cartesian product of them. Another use for the multiplication principle is when you have a repetition of processes and you multiply the number of possibilities for each uh, repetition. So actually they are the same. However, in the first one, we're saying the number of elements on the set, but actually it is the number of opportunities to get an, uh, the number of possible ways to get an element from the first set multiplied by the number of, uh, the number of elements that you have in the second set. Here, when you, we're talking about the repetition in the process, so each possibility is the number of possibilities in each, uh, in each part of the process, in each stage. So here, the question is, how many three-letter codes can be made from the alphabet? Can you tell me? No, Zach. Remember, you have to multiply the number, 
the number of possibilities. 78 is not a multiplication of the number of possibilities. 78 is more like uh, multiplying the number of possibilities by, eight, by, by some other number. No, dude. The biggest mistake that people, people make is not reading carefully. How many three-letter codes can be made from the alphabet? Guys, I need another answer, another try. Well, okay. So, for the first letter, there are 26 possibilities. Then, there are 26 possibilities for the second letter and there are 26 possibilities for the third letter of the code. Uh, by the multiplication principle The answer is 26 times 26 times 26, and this is equal to 17,526. Does that make sense, guys? Now, this, the next question goes for Doug. How many three-letter codes with no repetition can be made from the alphabet? No, William. No, Doug. How many three letter codes with no repetition? can be made from the alphabet. Michelle, you are correct. 15,600. So, uh, 26 possibilities for the first uh, letter. 25 for the second letter and 24 for the third letter. Look, your previous answer included a 23. That would be for a fourth letter, but we're talking about three letters. So the answer is uh, 26 times 25 times 24. This is equal to 15,600. Yeah, it is a three-letter code.
Is that clear? Oh, well, well, William, we're considering the, the, the three values. So we're talking about three values where the possibilities that we have. Yes, specifically the number of possibilities of the values. How many possibilities? Sack, yes. If it was a four letter code with no repetition, Duke's answer would have been right. A conductor has five songs to conduct during a concert, and he can conduct them in any order. In how many ways can he organize the concert? I have 120 and 120 so far. Is there any other answer? 120. Is there any other 120? Okay, the first song could a, uh, well, actually, no. uh, there are five possibilities for the first song. Brian, 3,125. Hmm. So there are five possibilities for the first song, and then four for the second song. If you want, if you go to a concert, do you want to repeat the songs? And one for the last song. So this is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, 120. And then come the tomatoes. Thank you, William. That, that's a nice answer. Uh, well, Katie, actually the problem is probably you love one song. But if you go to a concert and you listen to only one song, for one hour and 30 minutes or two hours, you're going to get tired of the song. OK. So here I have the definition of factorial. If you have n factorial, the symbol for factorial is the exclamation mark. That means um, it is the multiplication of all the numbers from 1 to n. So for example, if you have 5 factorial, this is going to be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. Now, good thing is multiplication is commutative, so you, have to, you can change the order. So this is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So what is 5 factorial? Can you tell me? 120, there you go. What is 10 factorial, guys? William, you're correct, 3,628,800. Remember, this is going to be 10 times 9 times blah, 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 times 2 times 1. And this is equal to 
three million six twenty eight eight hundred. Okay, so look at this. I'm instead of writing down all the numbers, what I'm doing is well ellipses to 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 say that I'm using some of the numbers. Yeah, that is gonna like quickly. If you want, you can go to the calculator and you can check what is 26 factorial. Okay, guys. So now we're gonna be talking about permutations. And in permutations, uh William, that's not a number. That's an, a representation of a number, but it's not exact. So actually, your number is going to have 27 digits, and the first three digits are going to be 403. That's not good enough for an answer. Uh, okay, so that would be nice for some lower class, but not here. Uh, you would like to, you, need, you would need to get a bigger calculator to get the correct answer. If you give me an answer with an exponent like that, with that E, uh, I would say, nope, that's not the answer. It's incorrect. Probably a computer, probably you should try Excel and make the, the cells really big. Okay, guys, second kind of uh, counting technique, permutations. The idea is you're going to choose R elements from a set of N elements. And be careful, because here the selection is going to be in a specific order. That means uh, on a race, you're, you want to pick first, second, and third place. Or, for example, for your committee, you want the president of the committee, you want the secretary, and you want the treasurer, something like that. Order, positions, it is always important. So remember, you have a set of N elements, and out of those N elements, you want to choose R. So the formula is here. P represents permutations. Then n is the number of elements in the set, and r is the number of elements you want to choose. The formula is, on top of the fraction, you have n factorial. On the bottom, you have n minus r, subtract first, and then factorial. Simplify, and you get the answer. Um, question here. How many three-letter codes with no repetition can be made from the alphabet? How many three-letter codes with no repetition can be made from the alphabet? Bravo, thank you, Doug, thank you. Yes, the answer is 15,600. However, using the formula, we can get uh, a different approach to the same answer. So here we're going to have 26 elements and we're going to choose three, right? Then the formula says 26 factorial goes on top, and on the bottom we have 26 minus 3, and that's going to be factorial. Now, don't forget to simplify first. So this is going to be 26 factorial divided by 23 factorial. Now, look at this. On top of the fraction, I'm going to say 26 times 25 times 24 times 23 times blah, blah, blah times 1. So remember, I'm simplifying here. And on the bottom, we have 23 times blah, blah, blah times 1. This is multiplication and division together we can simplify the numbers that are the same. So the one cancels with the one, the two with the two, the three with the three, blah, blah, blah. The 23 cancels with the 23. So we have 26 times 25 times 24. 
So this is, we know this multiplication, it is going to be 15,600. How was that, guys? Yes, if you know, uh, if you remember that this is a specific order, because, well, it is a code. You know that the code ABC is different than the code CBA. So here, the orders, we need a specific order. So that's a formula you have to use. Okay, guys. Next question is for you. A committee has seven members. One member is to be selected as chairperson, and another member is to be selected secretary. In how many ways can this selection be made? Sack says 42. Michelle says 42, Brian says 42, the answer is 42. So you are correct, guys. So for those who didn't make it, uh, this is gonna be P out of seven, choose two. So this is going to be seven factorial over seven minus two factorial which is equal to seven factorial over five factorial. Simplifying, this is gonna be, um, I'm gonna use a fraction just in case. This is gonna be seven times six times five factorial. I'm not gonna keep going. And then on, on the bottom I have five factorial. So I can simplify the five factorials. So this is gonna be seven times six, this is equal to 42. Uh, William, be careful because that's not the symbol for division. Or actually using that symbol means something else. You're using backslash, but you have to use slash. Okay, guys, questions about permutations. Okay, William. Yeah, uh, the idea is um, the slash is going to have the number on top of the fraction on the left and the number on the bottom on the right-hand side. But if you use the backslash, the number on the right is going to look on top. Yeah, William, be careful. You're going to make us. Uh, you're going to make us explode. Now, besides permutations, we have combinations. And as you can see here, it is the same as permutations, but order doesn't matter. So, in the previous examples, we had uh, number one, number two, number three. But, uh, uh, but if, I, if I ask you, can you give me the top three uh, in order? That's different. This is a combination and not a permutation. Give me where your three favorite teams to win in order, with no specific order. That's a combination. But if I ask you, give me the, first, the, the best team, give me the second team, and give me the third team, that's a specific order. So that's permutation. Okay, so because it is the same, the formula for combinations is going to be almost the same. However, be careful. 
there is an extra R factorial on the bottom. So look at this. In how many different ways can the chairperson of a 10-person committee select a subcommittee of three from the other nine members of the committee? In the previous, uh, in the previous example, we needed to select people specifically, chairperson and secretary. Here, we're only choosing three people. We're not saying for one thing or for another thing. So, can you find the answer in how many different ways can the chairperson of a 10 person committee select a subcommittee of three from the other nine members of the committee? No, William. No, no, Sack.
Finally, no. Oh, finally. Can you hear me, guys? OK. As always, there is a problem with my session. Today, I got a problem with the internet, which crashed for two or three minutes. And I don't understand. I disconnected the, uh, the modem and turned it back on. OK. So we were here. So we're, we're having zombie talk. Nice. Now, oh, let me check. Is the screen sharing? Yes. Mitchell, yes, the answer is 84. So let's make this quick. Uh, insert equation. So this is C out of 9, choose 3. So the formula is 9 factorial divided by um, 9 minus 3 factorial and 3 factorial. So this is going to be equal to 9 factorial on top divided by 6 factorial, 3 factorial. Now, I'm going to simplify. I'm going to say that on top is going to be 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 factorial divided by, oh no, I shouldn't do that. Actually, I have to change here. That's good, William, just to make sure that you don't make mistakes. So there's going to be 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 factorial over 6 factorial, 3 factorial. I'm going to cancel the 6 factorial. So this is 9 times 8 times 7 over. 3 times 2 times 1. On top, we have 504 divided by 6, which is 84. OK, guys, questions about counting techniques. Wow, awesome. OK, now we go for probability. So it is basically a division. So the probability of an event is going to be actually the number of successful tries over the number of possibilities. So first, you have to check all the possibilities that you have for an event, well, for, for something that could happen. And then you have to count the number of successful tries or what you actually need how many possibilities you really need. So for example, the easy one, what is the probability of getting an even number when you roll a fair die? Yes, it is going to be one half, but I'm gonna be more specific and explain. So there are six possible outcomes when you roll a die. One to six. So the denominator of the, the denominator of the probability is six. Now, there out of those six possible outcomes, three of them are even numbers. Those are two, four, six. That means the numerator is three. So the probability is three over six, which, it, which simplified is one over two, which can be said it is 0 0.5. Or if you want, you can say that this is 
all those four answers are the same. Now, what is the probability of obtaining a six when you roll a die? Uh, no, William. The probability is not 50-50. Those are actually odds. If you say 50-50, well, even though you're saying that you have the equal, uh, an equal probability for two things to happen, uh, that actually means that you're talking about odds and not probability. Okay, so what is the probability of obtaining a six when you roll a die? Oh, uh, before I forget, uh, William, if you say 50-50, actually that's 50 over 50, you would say one, and one represents 100%. Uh, what is the probability of obtaining a six? Well, this is going to be one over six, as so many people said. Now, what is the probability of obtaining six on each of two rolls? No, Andre. No, Zach. William, you are correct. So the probability to obtain a six on the first uh, throw is one over six and a six on the second throw is one over six. By the multiplication principle, the probability of obtaining six on each of two rolls is one over six times one over six equals one over 36. Now, what is the probability of obtaining six on each of five rolls? Douglas, yes, you are correct. So this is going to be by the multiplication principle. We have one over six, actually, one over six times 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 one over six, which is one over seven, 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 six. Or actually, we can say that this is equal to, I'm going to insert an equation, parenthesis, 1 over 6. And here, I'm going to use an exponent script. Um, one six to the fifth. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. So we get an we get the answer by using the multiplication principle. Multiply each probability for each repetition of the problem. Mm, nice. Now look at this problem because it is different. What is the probability of getting an addition of six when you roll two fair dice, or when you roll a die a, a die twice? But remember, an addition of six. No, William. No, Doug. No, William.
Nororlu. Okay, guys. First, since there are two roles, the denominator, or that means the number of outcomes, of possible outcomes, is 36. Now, uh, the possibilities to obtain a 6 are 1 and 5, 2 and 4, 3 and 3, 4 and 2, and 5 and 1. So there are 5 possibilities. So the probability is 5 over 36. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, you got the five, but you got different numbers on the denominator, William. What is the probability of obtaining 10 or more after... <laughs> what is the probability of obtaining 10 or more after adding, adding two rolls of a die? No, William, no, me. Oh, yes, Michelle. Yes. Look at this. We're going to have four and six. We're going to have five and five. We're going to have six and four. We're going to have five and six. We're going to have six and five. And we're going to have six and six. So that means the probability is 6 over 36, which is the same as 1 over 6. Is that okay, guys? Is it clear? Is it good? Okay, guys. So it is time to tell you the rules. This is like a game, so you need rules. First of all, all probabilities are, when in decimals, between 0 and 1, or between 0% and 100%. So remember, there is no such thing as 110%. If somebody said, says 110%, they're lying to you. They're trying to make you do better, but actually you know it is not going to happen. So if you give your 100%, Actually, that's kind of a lie, but whatever. It's closer to something good. Okay, now, if the probability, if the probability of an event is p, the probability that it doesn't happen is 1 minus p. So that is the probability of the event not happening or actually here, the complement of the, of the event. So if we have the probability, then you can find the probability of the event not happening. Now, we go back to sets, the beginning. An intersection means that two events happen at the same time. That means something happens now and now. Something happens and something else happens at the same time. An union means at least one of the, of the events or both happen, at least one of the events. That means either one or both. And then if you're asked to find the probability of at, of at least one of two events, uh, what, William? Oh, yeah. yeah OK, yeah. Uh, that's intersection. Yes, uh, it happens at the same time, or it happens uh, 
logically uh, when you have the and. That's the meaning of intersection, an and. So the probability that at least one of two events happen, or that means uh, union, is going to be actually the inclusion-exclusion principle. Now, we're talking about probabilities and not about the number of elements in a set, but it's the same thing. Two events are disjoint if their intersection is empty. That means when two sets don't have any element in common. That means the probability is zero. So, for example, the set of numbers greater than five and the set of numbers less than one. Those are uh, disjoint sets because the numbers that are greater than five are six, seven, eight, blah, 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 and the numbers that are less than one are zero, negative one, negative two, so they don't share anything. Two events are independent, so be careful. The word here is independent. If the probability of the intersection which is, remember, when two events happen at the same time, is equal to the multiplication of the probabilities of the events. So you have to check both uh, cases and be careful when to add. You should add, um, you should add probabilities when you have processes in different orders. Or actually, when you, when, when you, when you have the same process, the same processes in different orders. Like for example, uh, if you want to check, if you do it first and then somebody does it second. And then you have to check if the other person does it first and you want to do it second. That kind of change in the order. So you have to add both probabilities. And you multiply when you have a, diff a different stages, which is multiplication principle. Questions, guys? Okay, guys. In that case, I'm done. So don't forget to email me. And if you want, well, you can go now. You're free to go. We're done. <laughs>